We have entered a new world where nothing will be the same anymore. Indeed, the sudden, brutal and tragic outbreak of the coronavirus should not be understood only as the triggering of an unprecedented health crisis. It certainly is. But it also marks a turning point in history, as was the case in 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall or in 2001 with the September 11 attacks. The fall of the Berlin Wall had ended the bipolarization of the world once ruled by two powers. The United States and the Soviet Union. With the fall of the wall, the United States had just won a first crucial ideological victory, which would erect capitalism as the only possible model of economic development that all nations should embrace. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 also marked a historic turning point in Africa, because a year later, in 1990, the famous speech by Ball made by François Mitterrand will put an end to multi-party politics on the continent and will put African countries back on track. Way of democracy. Communism was dead and buried. The Soviet Union was doomed to disappear, and moreover, it will disappear, fragmented into several countries which will not hesitate to join NATO. The United States, through an undeniable ideological victory, had thus just established itself as masters of the world, controlling the world economy and imposing the dollar as the only currency in international trade. Since 1989, the world has been completely controlled by the United States, which, through the dollar, the military-industrial complex and even culture, Hollywood, could afford to neutralize any enemy who stands in their way without a blow. Thirty years later, a tiny virus changes everything. From now on, this American supremacy over the world will inevitably disappear. Indeed, the pandemic that has shaken our world for three months has plunged the world economy into an unprecedented crisis, worse than that of the Great Depression, but also worse than that of 2008. The world had never known a shock similar, and world economic powers are likely to leave feathers there. This new situation forces us to ask ourselves the question. In which world will we live tomorrow? This question has been asked many times, and so far no one, nor I for that matter, has the answer. However, if I were to strive to provide an answer to such a crucial question, I would say that, in the near future, we will be faced with four scenarios. First scenario. The United States will cease to be the first economic power in the world. Five months ago, no one would have imagined such a scenario. The American economy, under Trump, was doing very well with impressive figures. In fact, by April 2019, more than 263,000 jobs had been created in the United States. During this month, we saw a slight drop in the unemployment rate from 3.8% to 3.6%. For the first time since 1953, notes Fox News, the unemployment rate for women had reached 3.1%, the lowest rate since that date. Among Latinos, the unemployment rate was 4.2%, its lowest level since 1973 against 1.7% for veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. The economic upturn under Trump was visible everywhere. Over 4,000 jobs have been created in the industry. More than 33,000 jobs had been created in the real estate sector, 76,000 in new technologies, 62,000 in education, and 34,000 in the hotel sector. Even the most Trumpophobic media were taking their hat off to him, recognizing the 45th president for his very good economic record. Thus in October 2019, the CNBC media reports that the unemployment rate among blacks was only 5.5 percent, its lowest rate in history, and in 2019, the US GDP had experienced a 2.3 percent increase over the previous year, according to data from CountryEconomy.com. Since Trump came to power, annual GDP and GDP per capita have grown significantly. Here is the proof. Annual GDP in 2019 $21,427,100 million, 2018 $20,580,200 million, and 2017 $19,519,400 million. GDP per capita in 2019 dollar 65,456, 2018 dollar 62,869, and 2017 dollar 60,000. There was no doubt that Trump, in terms of economics, had done better than his predecessor, and if the economic factor was enough to re-elect a president, his re-election as head of the USA would have been obtained in 2019. Alas, in just two weeks, everything collapses like a house of cards. Now, even a recession is no longer out of the question. Indeed, for a week, the bad news on the economic plan accumulates, and the unemployment rate is likely to reach a record level, never recorded in the history of this country. Here too the figures are impressive. Thus, on March 23, the Fed, American Central Bank, stabs Trump announcing that the unemployment rate could now reach 30 percent, 
a record increase that had not even been recorded during the Great Depression of 1929. The COVID-19 devastates everything in its path because in March, in one week, it sends 3.3 million Americans out of work, according to a report by the Department of Labor. The big cities are not spared. New York registers 80,500 unemployed in one week on March 27. At the same time, 186,809 residents of California were unemployed against only 57,606 a week earlier, according to the Los Angeles Times. In Missouri, the unemployment rate rose by 30% on March 26, or 180,000 people affected by the devastating consequences of the virus. In Washington state, in one week, the unemployment rate reached 843% on March 26, increasing the number of job seekers from 6,000 to 133,478 in a single week. The U.S. economy is now down, and the risks of a recession are no longer averted by the Fed. It may well be that we are entering a recession, recognizes Jerome Powell, CEO of the Federal Reserve, Fed, in an interview with the American channel, NBC, on March 26. For the first time in the history of the United States, the Fed accuses a balance sheet of $5,000 billion, an increase of 12.4 percent compared to a week earlier. I must add that at the very beginning of the health crisis, the Fed had spent $75 billion to cope with the pandemic after seeing its interest rates lowered, which implies a drop in the purchasing power of the average American. It was in this financial crisis that an expression hitherto little known to the general public was born. Helicopter money. The image that this expression gives is that of a helicopter which, from the sky, pays banknotes to citizens in need. And that's exactly what happened, because at the end of March, Congress and the House of Representatives reached an agreement to release $2,000 billion, a first in the history of the United States, to save the economy and avoid of all costs the recession that would be dramatic for the Trump administration. The money is distributed as follows. Millions of adult American citizens will receive $1,200 individually versus $500 for children. $377 billion will be devoted to small businesses, $500 billion to businesses very affected by the coronavirus, $100 billion will be intended for hospitals, and $250 billion will be devoted to unemployment benefits. North America is economically dead. However, it is trying to reassure the financial markets so as not to aggravate a deleterious crisis. The economic collapse of this giant will not happen suddenly. It will take time, but it will happen sooner or later. To avoid such a scenario, the United States will have no choice but to use force. A third world war is no longer to be ruled out either second scenario. The European Union will disappear. The current crisis which is shaking the whole world has made it possible to reveal that the European Union of which boasted the European elites for several years is in agony. Indeed, it has never been so divided between a rich and selfish Northern Europe, which categorically refuses to come to the aid of a Southern Europe in crisis on all fronts. Today, this diplomatic war between Spain, Italy, Portugal and France on the one hand and the Netherlands and Germany on the other, bodes well for an uncertain future. If the elites continue to sing the praises of a European Union necessary for the survival of the old continent, the peoples will end up sanctioning. Disappointed and totally abandoned, they will end up delivering the last knockout to a moribund union, which has shown its limits in a crisis of such magnitude. Third scenario. Africa could finally free itself. Long controlled by Western powers which impose economic models very disconnected from the realities of the continent and which, through the plunder of its natural resources, prevent it squarely out of poverty and misery, Africa could finally s free from the tutelage of the West. And the moment has never been more favorable, because, at the end of this crisis, the Western powers, formerly very influential on the black continent, notably France and the United States, will face an unprecedented economic crisis, which will prevent them to enjoy their position as gendarmes of the continent. A huge opportunity that African leaders will have to seize to now demand equal treatment and win-win cooperation. Fourth scenario. China will lead the world economically. Indeed, the only country that emerged victorious from this crisis is probably China. Very struck by the pandemic in January, the Middle Kingdom had reacted very quickly by taking admittedly totalitarian measures, but which have proven to be very effective in the fight against the virus. Its economy has certainly suffered, but today, the city of Wuhan is no longer in quarantine, and 75% of economic activity is in progress, which is a total success in a country which has more than 1 billion inhabitants. I would also add that for two weeks, China has undoubtedly become the engine of the world, and Western powers, Spain, Italy, are no longer shy about turning their back on the European Union 
and asking for its help when it comes to obtaining masks. Its presence in Africa, which has widely aroused the anger and jealousy of the West, has never been more important. In fact, for the past two weeks, Beijing has been touring the continent to offer free masks and sanitary equipment to African countries, with which it has established very strong relationships over the years, which, at the end of the crisis, will have a very significant impact on its presence in Africa and will create an unprecedented rapprochement between the Middle Kingdom and the Black Continent, to the dismay of the West, whose presence is increasingly contested by African youth. Some will ask me the question. But, what about Russia? Well, the answer is simple. Russia will be the first military power in the world. It suffices to follow the political news of this country to know that the Russians have been preparing for several years. Moreover, in January 2018, Putin boasted in these terms. The Russian army is one of the most powerful in the world. The four scenarios that have just been presented remain scenarios. They in nowhere reflect reality. However, one thing is certain. This world will completely change in the near future, and the West will lose much of its political, military and economic influence to Asia, 